zero. Joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel Rick Franconia. He is a retired U.S. Air Force intelligence officer and Middle East specialist. He spent 25, 27 years in the armed services. He was assigned to the National Security Agency and to the CIA, and he served in Vietnam. He is a noted expert both academically and in practice in Middle East affairs, and he's also an Arab linguist. Colonel, thank you for joining us today. Sure thing, George. And I also served at the embassy in Damascus. I think that's uh, important. I uh, think that's important considering the discussion we'll have today. Thank mm -hmm. you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to begin by asking you, uh, late this afternoon, Secretary of State Kerry made a statement, as did Obama, I guess some generalized statements in, in a meeting that there was some pool reporters, considering retaliation on, uh, in Syria because they now have definitive proof that 1,500 people died from chemical warfare, about one-third of those were children. Uh, let me ask you this, for starters. There's going to, something's going to be happening here. They've been doing hand-wringing for over a week. Is this the smartest thing to do at this point in time? Is it too little, too late, particularly since they made it clear there's going to be no change in regime here? What's your reaction to what's been going on the last couple yeah, of days, I, particularly I, today? George, I think that's an excellent characterization. This is too little, too late. We're doing maybe the right thing, but for the wrong reason and looking for the wrong objective. Uh, the objective of this should be regime change. We've been saying for years now, since, since the Syrian revolution began two years ago, that Assad has to go. Yet, uh, when it comes time to do something about it, uh, we're not willing to step up and cause that to happen. If we're going to go in there and, and do a punitive strike, I don't know what it's going to accomplish. It's not going, if it's not going to change the regime, why do it? Uh, Assad is not going to stop killing his own people. He's already killed, some say, uh, 100, some say 120,000 of his own people. Yet, if he kills 1,500 with chemicals, we're willing to launch the U.S. military arsenal at him? That just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with what you're saying. Let me ask you this, though. The British last night, uh, the Prime Minister thought he was going to, the Prime Minister thought he was going to have a victory last night and and putting together some steam behind this retaliation. But the, by a close vote, it was rejected, an endorsement of military strike only in principle. Uh, what is your reaction to that? And is this a major blow to the prestige of not only to the prime minister, but to President Obama? I, I, I think it is. Uh, you know, the, the British have been with us in virtually every military operation we've conducted for decades. They're, they're our closest ally, some would say our best ally. And, and for the British to wash, our hands of, wash their hands of this and let us do this on their own uh, really says something for the, the lack of political clarity in what we're doing. Uh, you know, I, I don't like to delve into the political aspects of this. I try and stay on, on the military side. But uh, if, if the British aren't going to be there, it'll be us alone. We, we do the bulk of it anyway, but still. Uh, we may have the French, and there'll be some trappings of some multinational things, but this looks like it's going to be yet another American show. Uh, what do you make of the situation there, since he's been procrastinating for so long in response? Are there any good guys left there? If we were to, yeah, take, out, if we were to take out the, the present government, who's left to take over? Is it is just going to be bad guys taking over again? No, that, that's, that's the problem. You know, we had an opportunity, an opportunity squandered. Uh, you, uh, at least a year and a half ago, we could have, we could have uh, solved this. We could have gotten in there. Uh, you know, covertly started supporting the rebels. And at that time, the rebels were primarily defectors from the Syrian army. They created the Free Syrian Army. And they were mostly, well, they were all Syrians. They were all secularists. There was very little Islamist uh, influence there. Uh, they turned to the West. They turned to their Arab, uh, Gulf Arab allies and said, help us. And uh, we didn't help them, so they turned to the only people that would, and those happened to be the Islamists. So now we've had a year and a half of constant influx of Islamic fighters and Islamic fundamentalists from all over the region pouring in there. But uh, when you look at actually who makes up the rebels, uh, the Islamists are probably the fiercest of the fighters, but they're not the bulk of the fighters. The bulk of the fighters still are the secular Free Syrian Army. So when this is over, there will be a power struggle. Uh, I call it the second battle for Damascus. Uh, and, and that will be between those who want to set up a secular society and those who want to set up some sort of Islamic state. And they already have a name for it, the Islamic State uh, in Iraq and the Levant or in greater Syria. Uh, I don't think they're strong enough to emerge victorious. I think we'll see some sort of a secular thing. But there will be yet a continued civil war 
after and if this regime falls. We have about a minute left in this section, Colonel. Uh, for the past week, we've heard a lot of leaks from the White House, as though they're laying out their strategy to the public, I assume trying to take the pulse of the subject, the, of the public. Does this make any sense to you? Is this just bad form in terms of leading up to some sort of attack like this? Yeah, it's, well, first of all, it's, just, it's, it's not militarily smart. Uh, you're, you're telegraphing your moves to the, to the bad guys. They know it's probably going to be tomahawk strikes. They, they know we're not going to... Uh, we've taken certain things off limits. We're not going to bomb the chemical facilities. We're not going to bomb the palace. We're not going to go after uh, regime targets. So what does that leave? That leaves some military installations. It's not going to have an effect. And, uh, you know, this morning I was watching a lot of the news out of Syria, a lot of the rebel reporting uh, out of Syria, and all you're seeing are disbursement of missiles. They're going to hide locations. Uh, the people are moving out of their offices. They've taken over all the schools in Damascus, and they're setting up shop there. Uh, I mean, this is going to be another blowing up a, uh, an aspirin factory in Sudan. That's incredible. Colonel, I want to thank you for your time on the show, and uh, hopefully you'll appear on the show again. Thanks so much. Anytime, George. Take Coming up next is Dr. Robert Royal, president of the Faith and Reason Institute, joining us to discuss the subject of religious freedom. We'll be right back. I'm George Marlin, and this is the Steve Malsberg Show 